but here was my river, a whole tributary, the Pigeon River, the whole tri one whole tributary was killed by the pollution that was dumped into it by a paper company. Dead water came out with great chunks as big as that piano of white foam that came all the way down and the odor along with it came down into Tennessee. So I just said, well, if I write this book, I have to have this chapter, but I'll try to make it interesting. I'll call it, Who Killed the French Broad? And maybe they'll think it's a murder mystery. Well, it was a murder, all right, but it wasn't any mystery. This beautiful river, the French Broad, heading in the mountains, flowing all the way down to the Holston and the Tennessee, was heavily polluted. One of the first persons I know of who became concerned about the pollution of the water in western North Carolina and East Tennessee was Wilma Dykeman, who in the early 1950s began studying and writing about issues of the environment and particularly the water. 1955, she published her book on the French Broad, which is a masterpiece. It's one of the most important books ever written about this region. She wrote the French Broad seven years before Rachel Carson wrote The Silent Spring, which had an enormous impact. She was the first person ever that I'm aware of to articulate that you can't have a good economy unless you have a good environment. It would have been easy for her to take the easy way out and to say, folks, we're OK, but there are some bad actors around. And the worst actor of all is champion fiber and paper. If we can just make them do right and become like us, we'll be fine. But uh, she knew that was, that was not true because none of us was doing right. Wilma Dykeman certainly would be one of those heroes. She was seriously a champion, not just for the water quality, but for the whole environment. I do remember being struck by how, how much she was ahead of her time in thinking about the whole ecosystem. The French Broad Country is particularly a region of springs. The water of most of the brooks and streams and rivers they form is nearly as pure in its pristine state as water can be. But when we turned away from the spring at the edge of the kitchen yard and turned on the faucet in our porcelain sink, we turned off our interest in what came out of the spigot. One by one, we allowed ourselves and others to begin the rape, which finally in places ended in the murder of the French broad. And it had come about precisely because the headwaters were so pure. The sole blame for the river's fouling could not be blamed to any one person or group. Because it belongs to everyone, it's the possession of no one. I think the thing that, that made some of those early environmentalists, the John Muir's going back there, the Otto Leopold's, the Wilma Dykeman's was their ability to inspire people to do better. The French Broad has already, I think, stood the test of time as a, as a timeless evocation of a place and a culture and, and a region. And I think that that book, as much as any, has, uh, has established Mother's place in environmental thinking as well as regional respect.